students welcome to the another video of energy management and audit in this class we study about the second module of energy management saving opportunities in lightning so what are the saving opportunities in lightning systems so we know that lightning system is very critical very critical and it is very much needed in industries and domestic supply domestic use also so we now see what are the saving opportunities which we can explore in this uh, topic uh, in, on this topic that is uh, in lightning so there are different in this module too there are we need to have a saving opportunities in lightning motors electric heating electrolytic process so first of all we study about the lightning so i'm i'm just we just see that the most of the energy consumption uh, on that we are having 10 percentage overall energy consumption overall energy consumption 10 percentage is being consumed as a lightning and 25 percentage in the space heating and cooling and uh, and ventilation and all we are having the 9 and 10 percentage 10 percentage for refrigeration and we will just see in detail in the fourth module we see about hvac heating ventilation and air, and air conditioning so there we cover the refrigeration and ventilation and in the space heating and all we just cover in the next topic that is uh, energy management of opportunities in lightning motors and uh, electrolytic process and heating okay now we just look in to the one more uh, point that the world's energy consumption of primary energy consumption increased to 3.6 into 10 raised to 11 gigajoule in 1990 to 4.01 into 10 raised to 11 gigajoule in 1999 this equates an annual 1 percentage 1 percentage growth in the energy consumption in overall world so that the energy consumption will be increasing in 1 percentage so more energy energy is being consumed from from one year to the other year so so that it calls for the energy management opportunities in the uh, lighting so that how can we manage how can we uh, reduce the uh, energy consumption in the lighting how can you reduce the energy consumption in the motor that which is being widely used in the industries how can you reduce the energy consumption in the space heatings and how can you reduce the energy consumption in the electrolytic process which being done in the industries so now for a starting class we just only see about the lighting process okay so so we you know that the electric lighting is a major energy consumer enormous energy savings are possible using the energy efficient equipment that is the effective controls and careful design and we we just see there are several types of the energy efficient lightings and and affordable lightings so the the following are the few examples of energy saving opportunities with efficient lighting so we just see the six points so the installation of compact fluorescent lamp cfl instead of the incandescent lamp so incandescent lamp that is bulb type of lamp instead of that we can install cfl that is compact fluorescent lamp next one installation of energy efficient fluorescent lamp in the place of conventional fluorescent lamp the energy option means t5 or t8 type of lamp so those lamp which is having the lesser diameter that is fluorescent lamp is the in uh, layman's word we call it as a tube light tube light so that tube light uh, is having the very high dimensions 
that is the diameter will be very high so very more so so the those uh, that diameter you can reduce to the t5 that is 5 by 8 inch and t8 that is 8 by 8 inch like that so that type of uh, by this also you can save the energy energy consumption next one installation of occupancy of motion sensor it to turn on lights and off when appropriate so you know that if a person puts on light and if he is not needed then those energy consumed for a particular hour is of no use so that whenever you are using an energy it should yield a effective effective it, it should be in an effective way so it should yield an effective result so without that if you are consuming if you are switching on your lights and tube lights etc this will results in the this will results in the uh, consumption of more energy and this will be the this will not results in a fruitful this will not uh, this is not recommended in an industry to switch on and off the switch on the light whenever uh, whenever needed whenever not needed and also that there you can use a motion sensor when a particular person is there in a room then only the light will be on when a person moves out of the room then the light will be switched off automatically next one comes the use an automated device such as key tag system to regulate the electrical power in a room so this is being um, effectively implemented in the lodges and in your ho hotels uh, etc there be there you will be having an key tag once if you insert the key tag then only the light then only the power for a particular room will be turned on when you when you are leaving the room you should have to take off your key tag then only you can lock your room so if you if you want to enter your room you should have to take your you should you should insert your key, key tag then only the room will be open so once if you are leaving the room you should have to take your key tag and then only you can lock your room so like that if you are doing so that the overall power of the room can be regulated then offer night lights to prevent bathroom lights from being left on all night so if you are inserting a, in a bathroom if you are uh, installing an 8 watt or 10 watt bulb or 9 watt bulb so that when when you are when you after the usage when you you, you are leaving the room then also you cannot uh, you are not wish to turn the lights in a bathroom say for an uh, patient say uh, he is having some uh, he is having some urinary uh, infection he needs to constantly urinate for an 30 minutes or 20 minutes he need to urinate so that he cannot turn off the lights in the bathroom or lights in the toilet so that there what you can do there you can replace the replace the bulb that is 9 watt bulb with an oh, oh, 0 watt bulb 0 watt bulb or an, with an lower uh, with an night bulb night lights so this will reduce the energy and which this will reduce the energy consumption and it will results in the energy save next one replace all exit signs and light emitting with light emitting diodes in the exit signs. so you can you can observe the exit signs and the inlet signs in your cinema theater and your recreational room and all uh, in and also you can see the uh, 
uh, different science types of science that is in your uh, 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 in the um, commercial building in the uh, in the multi storage building in the fashion malls and all there you can see the different types of lighting arrangements so this lighting ar arrangements you can replace it from the incandescent lamp or cfl lamps with the led lamps so why because the led lamps will consume lesser energy compared to cfl and compact floors compared to compact fluorescent lamp and the incandescent lamp so that you can make the exit signs and the inlet signs with the leds next one use high efficiency hid exterior lighting so high intensity so you, you, you can use a hid exterior lighting so with that hid high intensity uh, uh, lightning so so you can replace the sodium vapor lamp you can replace the mercury vapor lamp you can replace the halogen lamps with your led type of lamps okay and had lightning controls such as photo sensors and time clocks so if you are having the if you are adding the photo sensors and time clocks to a street light it will be an effective it will be an added advantage why because the if you are putting a, a time clock that is 6 am to 6 pm uh, this light should be off and after 6 pm to 6 am then only the street light should be on then then you, you can see that the street light is on only during the night time and street lights are off during the street lights are off during the day time so like this also you can save the uh, lots of energies now we see in detail how uh, detail oh, one by one so the compact so the compact fluorescent lamps cfls in place of incandescent lamps offer uh, use different more advanced technology than incandescent lamp lamp light lamps light bulbs and come in a range of styles and size based on brand and purpose they can replace regular incandescent bulbs in almost any light fixture including globe lamps for bathroom vanity lamps for research lighting dimming and three way functionality lights cfls use about 2 to 3 2 by 3 third less energy than standard incandescent bulbs give the same amount of light and can last to 6 to 10 times longer see you just underline these words it will consume only 2 by third of the incandescent lamp cfl will consume only 2 by third of the incandescent light lamps and it will it can last 6 to 10 times longer okay and cfl's price will be somewhat uh, much more much more costlier than compared to the uh, incandescent light incandescent bulb but for an uh, if you take for a time being it will last long so that uh, for replacing the two incandescent lamp you can buy you can uh, purchase one cfl lamp that is the incandescent lamp replace in the good you cfl lamp purchase and it is a very incandescent lamp which it is not a do some or you can have a hard to incandescent lamp when you can do it upon you see if a lamp in a chair and some path to mass and some end out up here rent to see if a lamp and incandescent lamp in the post to have an end or see if a lamp then they can purchase it so costly around bust but the CFL lamp in time cool the little under other cost effective on next we see the minimum light outputs that is 450 lumens and the electrical power consumption so for incandescent lamp we are having 40 watt and compact fluorescent lamp we can see 9 to 11 watt 
okay so you can see that the lumen so 450 lumen for 450 lumen if you are using incandescent it should be 40 watt see for compact compact uh, fluorescent it will be 9 to 11 watt and for led if you are going it should be 6 to 8 watt so say for 800 lumen this is the normal lumen required in a room and the incandescent if you are going for 60 then you can see for compact fluorescent lamp maximum 15 watt 15 one five and for LED you will be having 9 to 12 LED so normally 9 watt LED is commonly available in most of the uh, shops so you can purchase it and you can fit it in a room where 800 lumens is being required so it will be equivalent to your 60 watt uh, 60 watt incandescent lamp and 15 watt CFL lamp so CFL lamp you can see 60 means 15 into 4 that is 60 so it is 4 times it consumes 4 times lesser energy lesser watts compared to the incandescent compared to the incandescent lamp so like that for same lumens for same same light which you get you you, you are your energy consumption is very lesser so watts refers to the amount of energy used not the amount of light light is uh, if you want to have get light it should be lumen so that is why i told you if you are getting 800 lumen for 60 watt then the 800 lumen for 15 watt you will be getting for cfl okay then the installation of energy efficient fluorescent lamps in place of conventional fluorescent lamps so energy efficient fluorescent lamp so I think you know about the working of fluorescent lamp. Many lodging facilities may already use fluorescent lighting in their high traffic areas such as lobbies and office areas. However, not all fluorescent lamps are energy efficient and cost effective. There are several types of fluorescent lamps that are that vary depending on duration of the lamp, life, energy efficiency, and regulated power and quality of color it transmits. There are few type styles where worth nothing those these models are simply T12, T8 and T5. The names comes from their diameter in 8 inch that is T12 lamps means 12 by 8 inch that is 1 and a half inch and T8 lamp is 8 by 8 inch that is 1 inch and T5 lamp is 5 by 8 inch. So you can see the T5 lamp is much more thinner than T12 lamp. T12 lamp is 1.5 inch and T5 lamp is 5 by 8 inch and T8 lamp is 1 inch. Okay. Then this is simply where to identify the type of fluorescent lamps and you can see the uh, dimensions of the fluorescent lamps. So T8 lamps provides more illumination, better color and do not flicker of tone exhibited by standard fluorescent lamp. So normally T12 fluorescent lamp will have this one and so T12 lamp fluorescent lamp is the standard fluorescent lamp and it is recommended to use T8 lamp. T5 lamp is also good but it is most costlier than T, uh, TA. T5 lamp is most costly and T8 lamp is more is mostly affordable. Next comes the installation and occupation of motion sensors to turn on lights and off where appropriate. So this I already explained to you. The lights can be controlled by occupancy sensor to allow operation whenever whenever someone is within the area or being scanned. When motion can no longer be be detected that is there is no detection in mo motion in a room then lights shut off the passive infrared sensors react to changes in motion the controller must have an uh, uh, must have an unobstructed view of the building area being scanned so the building area should be scanned doors partitions stairways etc will block the motion reduction and reduce its effectiveness so you can see the doors stairways and etc will blocks the motions so 
and the best applications for passive infrared occupancy sensors are open spaces with clear view of air being scanned then rather than in a uh, closed room if it is being put to the open space then it can see much more so ultrasonic tra sensors transmit sound above the range of human hearing and monitor the time it takes for the sound waves to return so so you can use motion sensors for that one to detect the motions and you can use ultrasonic sensors also so a break in pattern caused so, so what this ultrasonic sensor will do ultrasonic sensor will send the ultrasonic sound that is about 20 what is ultrasonic sound ultrasonic sounds are the sounds which ranges from 20,000 hertz it, it is above the 20,000 hertz so above the 20,000 hertz we can and not be able to hear so some bats will be able to hear but we are not able to hear that type of sound so that type of sounds is being transmitted and it is being received so if the transmission and receive and if from that it can able to affect if any if there is any break in pattern by a motion if there is a break in pattern by a motion then the area it triggers the, the it triggers the control and it will switch on the light. If there is no breaking pattern, then the light is switched off. Ultrasonic sensor can see around obstructions and are best for areas with cabinet, shielding, restrooms, open areas requiring 360 degree, 360 degree coverage. Though some occupancy sensors utilize both passive infrared and ultrasonic technology, but are usually most morally expensive. Passive and ultrasonic sensors are usually expensive and they can be used to control one lamp, one fixature or many fixtures. It can work in three modes, time mode, sensor mode and motion sensitivity settings. So you, here you can see the potential energy cost savings. So for officers it can save up to 25 to 50 percentage and for restrooms it can save up to 30 to 75 percentage and you can see in for warehouses it can save up to 15 to 75 percentage so in warehouses it, warehouses means in a room where a particular uh, equipment so many uh, so many goods and all being stored so you cannot uh, you, you, so so many goods are stored for example so many rice uh, stacks have been stored. Or a warehouse is getting developed. Or food processing industries. Or a or lots of uh, uh, lots of goods are being stored. So so in that uh, houses, so there is no need to switch on the light. So when a particular an inspector will come and if he inspect then only there is no need to switch on the light so this it can be detected by the motion sense okay next comes use an automated device such as key tag system to regulate the electricity power in a room so the key tag system uses master switch to as master switch at the entrance of the guest room and require the use of room key to card them to activate so room key uh, room key in the card will adinulla press cheyda mathre ad activate avathadu so using this technique only only occupied rooms consume energy because most electrical appliances are switched off when key card is removed when guest leaves the room when guest leaves the room the oh, whatever the electrical equipment is there inside that one these are all automatically switched off the key tax system uh, key tax system key tax system switch at the so you can see the key tax system here to room number 202 it is an insert key to key for power and all so once if it inserts then it so using this technique only occupied rooms consume energy because most energy switched off when key cards removed so this energy has a 
potential saving about $105 per room per year. Next one, offer night lights to prevent bathroom lights from being left on all the nights. So many guests opt to have lights on while they sleep. By turning the bathroom light on and leaving the bathroom door cracked open, guests are unable to find their way through an unlocked room in the middle of night. So in the middle of night, one uh, unfortunately due to bad dreams, one person get awakened then he need to go to bathroom. So he need to have, you need to switch on the light. So otherwise he will fall down. So go to that time, go to that need, you can, you can uh, put one uh, uh, night line, night light in a bathroom so that uh, you can consume the uh, energy. So the energy consumption can be reduced. Those who are occupied by children may have to do the same to comfort their child okay next one so this is how you can see the and next one replace all exit signs with light emitting diode all exit signs with light emitting diode this uh, the development of light emitting diodes has allowed the replacement of exit sign lighting with more energy efficient alternatives. Multiple LEDs properly configured produce equivalent lighting and consume 95% less electricity than incandescent lamp. So I told you, so we need to replace the incandescent lamp for uh, showing the signs of the exit. So if you put an exit here and uh, on that background if you glow an incandescent lamp, so this incandescent lamp will consume more energy. So that for that one what you have to do, you have to replace that incandescent lamp with an LED so that LED will consume very less amount of energy. So you can see that uh, 9 watt LED is much uh, will, uh, be, will do the same work of 60 watt incandescent lamp. So you can consume less energy. The major benefit is the 20 year life cycle rating of the LEDs. They virtually eliminate maintenance. Of the three different styles of exit signs, incandescent signs are the least expensive but are inefficient and use energy release heat instead of light. So it will uh, uh, release most of the heat than light. So you can see the power consumption. So input powers for incandescent is 40, fluorescent is level and LED is 2. So, for so 2 watts, you can use 2 watt LEDs, you can use. So, this 2 watt LEDs will produce same lights for the 40 watt incandescent lamp. And the yearly en energy, we can we need to have 350 kilowatt hour. So, one, if you take for 1 kilowatt hour, 2 rupees, you need to have 700 rupees as an, as an electricity bill. So for that one, if you replace it by fluorescent, you need to have the 96 plus 96, 80, 188 rupees, 1, 182, uh, 182 or rupees something. You need to have 200 rupees around for fluorescent. So if you're using the LED, you need to you, you need to uh, you need to have 36 rupees. So if you take one kilowatt hour or Kilowatt hour ni, one rupee which it, two rupee which no one gave. Padanette into into, upatta rupee, maathre, one kollang onde, that is energy consumption down. So lamp life, you can see, it is of ten years plus also. And the estimated energy cost per year, you can see, uh, one dollar, one point one dollar, and you can see twenty one dollar. $21. So the incandescent lamp will consume more energy and it will consume and it will be having more cost. Next one use high high efficiency HID high intensity discharge exterior lamp. So high intensity discharge lighting is much more efficient and preferable to incandescent cords, halogen and most fluorescent light fixture. HID from, from least to most efficient. 
include mercury vapor metal halide and high pressure sodium mercury vapor is seldom used any anymore so that you can replace it with metal halide lamp which metal halide lamp energy conversion percentage so you can replace it with this one and both metal halide and high pressure sodiums are excellent out outdoor lighting system so you can replace the mercury vapor and sodium vapor lamp with metal halide and high pressure sodium uh, vapor lamp so high pressure sodium vapor lamp has a pink orange glow and is used when good color redemption is in very much critical so color redemption means uh, the very good color redemption is there for fluorescent lamp so fluorescent lamp will will emit the white light but for sodium vapor lamp you can see it will emit the pink orange glow so for the pink orange glow it is so you, you can you, you use the sodium vapor lamp in this as a street light by because in a street light by using a street light there is no uh, there is not much uh, effect in color redundance so for a particular car if it so say if an yellow car it will look in the light as a pink or orange it doesn't matter doesn't matter if a, if a white car if it hooks in and in a, in the street light as an orange or a pink it doesn't matter so if if you are using the sodium vapor lamp in an your textiles and all textiles and all so then what happens so the color of the cloth will vary drastically so if you are putting a if you are showing a white cloth then it will look like a pink cloth so that color rendering uh, is as if it is not needed there you can use this metal halide and sodium vapor lamp so metal halide through less efficient uh, so 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 you you can use the color rendering is uh, not a uh, um, not a critical you can use the high pressure sodium vapor lamp and for metal halide it is having the high color rendering that is it will uh, produce white lights so metal halide through less efficient it provides the white light and good good color redemption good color redemption means it is producing the white light so those light which is producing the white light will be having the good color redemption hd lights mostly utilized in flood light flood light in your uh, uh, in your so the, the, i think you are most of you are watching the ipl matches so in the ipl matches so you can see in the stadium there are lots of flood lights in the night night so in, a, in not to able to ball or bat the you, you need to switch on the lights so this flood light is being very much needed and there you can use high intensity discharge lamp or metal halide lamp so metal halide lamp you can use for that one so the best type for any application depends on the area being lit and mounting options so like this this is how a sodium vapor lamp will look a metal halide it will look same same to your same it looks for your flood light next one adding lighting controls such as photo sensors or time clocks so photo sensor controls monitor daylight conditions and allow fixtures to operate only when needed photo sensors photo sensors means it, it will sense the it will sense when the it will sense the daylight when the daylight is very lesser then it will switch on the street light so say when an, in a very cloudy atmosphere when the daylight is very lesser then it will switch on the street light photo sensor will sense only the uh, lights and it will not sense whether the uh, today is uh, day or night it will sense only the light in a particular surrounding 
where it is meant to. Photo sensor detects the quantity of light and sends signal to maintain the controllers to, to adjust the lighting. Photo sensors are commonly used with outdoor lighting to automatically turn on lights at dusk, half at dawn, a very cost effective and control device. It is very cost effective and it is very controlled. This helps to lower the energy cost by ensuring that the unnecessary lighting is not left on during day hours. So okay, so like this, you can uh, use day lighting by using Zigbee's sensors and all to uh, to control these photo sensors. So these are all the purpose so you can the time of control will be simple time such as multi channel time control special uh, purpose time controls so you can just read out to this one i am not going in detail i just uh, introduced you the concept so the video become very vast so in order to that i am i am uh, going to end this topic now and in the next class i will be discussing about the motors the energy water the energy saving opportunities in motors Okay, bye. Have a nice day.